Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Pastor Grady. I'm the pastor of this church, and I'm very excited to share the Word of God with you this morning. And I um, see some familiar faces, and uh, it's just so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. I have a, a couple of announcements, maybe just one. We just launched a new website for our church. It is on your bulletin. It's called gladwinsda.com. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is that my goal is that we will start posting sermons up there. Um, I think at this point, it's just going to be my sermons because I'm the one that is, we don't have live stream going on. Uh, we're still working on that, um, but I do record my sermons because it's for the, the Strong Tower Radio. So I thought, hey, if I'm going to send it to Strong Tower Radio anyway, we can also have it on our website. So that way you can go through my previous sermons if there's anything that you like and you can listen back again. But I'm excited about that new website, gladwinsda.com, so just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, this morning... We're going to be studying the Word of God. And uh, just to give you a heads up, our topic today will be prophecy. Therefore, we're going to be looking at several text passages. And you feel, if you feel like you can keep up with the pace, feel free to open it and follow along in your Bibles. But if not, you can open your Bibles in Revelation 12 and 13. That's where we're going to stay most of the time. But I'm going to also going to quote other verses, and they're all going to be on the screen. I don't want to leave anybody behind, so I hope that we can follow along together. And um, I want to invite you to pray before we begin. Father in heaven, once again we come before you, thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity to open your word we ask for the Holy Spirit to open our eyes, open our understanding, give us a willing heart to be led by your word. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Now recently, recently I was given a 20-page explanation of why the recent solar eclipse was the beginning of persecution for Christians. This man looked at me dead in the eye, and he said, Look, starting Monday, April 8, persecution will begin, and those who follow Jesus would be locked up in prison. And then he went on in our conversation, and he said, Look, the eclipse on Monday will be fake. Everyone will think it's a real eclipse, while in reality, the sun is going to be covered by a UFO. Now, at this point, I just tried my best to not laugh at him. I was like, okay, just keep, keep listening. And he went on and on and on, I mean, with legit, sincere passion. Now, I don't know where we stand on that, but after talking with him, it got me thinking. Any of us can buy into theories like this, and we might be wondering the same thing with all these things that are happening in our country, where are we headed? Where are we going? Now, just a disclaimer. I won't be sharing any conspiracy or man-made theories. I won't be sharing any economic predictions or political analysis. But I will share with you what the Bible has to say about the future of the United States of America. Now, before we get into any particulars, I'll answer your question. Some of you might be wondering, why are we looking into the Bible prophecy to understand the future of our country? Why the Bible? Let me tell you why. 
This book has been around for over 2,500 years. And any historian would agree that this book has stood the test of time more than any historical book. This book contains predictions or prophecies of the world's most powerful kingdoms in the past. And guess what? It all came true. How could it be true? Because of this text. Listen to what God of the Bible says. Isaiah 46 verse 9 through 10. Remember the former things of old. For I am who? I am God. And there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. And then he went on by proving himself why you should call me God. Because he says, I can declare the end from the beginning. There is no other stronger proof to show that God is real than by looking at prophecy. Prophecy shows that God knows the end from the beginning. Daniel 2.21 says, He, talking about God, removes kings and raises up kings. From these texts, we know that God knows the end from the beginning. He is the one that set up leaders in the country. So this tells me that the history of our world is not guided by powerful men. Like Alexander the Great or even George Washington. It is God who guides the history of mankind. And he reveals the future of our world, where? In this book. So let's get into our Bibles. Turn to Revelation chapter 12. And we will be looking at the beginning of this country. Starting in verse 16, you'll see how the United States of America is first mentioned. Revelation 12 Starting in verse 16. Are we there yet? All right. The Bible says, But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon has spewed out of his mouth. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pastor, there's, there's no USA in this text. What are you talking about? But look, friends, Bible prophecy is written in symbols, including this text. So if we want to understand this text, we have to understand the principle of understanding Bible prophecy. And here it is. Always let the Bible explain itself. And after you let the Bible explain itself, you want to match that with our historical records. So that's what we're going to be doing. Let's break this verse down together. First, I want you to notice that there are several characters mentioned in the text. First question, who was being helped? The woman. What does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? Ephesians 5.25, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved who? The church and gave himself for her. If Christ is the husband, who is the wife or the woman? The church. So we know in Bible prophecy, women represents God's church. Moving on. Second question. According to Revelation 12, 16, who helped the church? According to this text. The earth. What does earth represent? Now, earth in Bible prophecy appears several times, and so does the opposite of earth, water or sea. So we can look at the meaning of sea and understand what earth means. Here's the definition of sea. Revelation 17, verse 15. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are what? Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. In other words, 
sea or water in Bible prophecy represents a populated area. So, think with me. If the sea symbolizes a populated area, what does earth represent? Exactly the opposite. Earth represents unpopulated area, sparsely settled and somewhat vacant. Here's the next question. Who was the dragon? Yeah, your answer is correct. Satan is the devil, but where in the Bible does it say that dragon symbolizes the devil or Satan? It's in Revelation 12, verse 9. The Bible says, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called what? The devil and Satan. Keep this text handy, by the way, because this is the only text that reveals all four of Satan's aliases. Dragon, serpent, devil, or Satan. They're all pointing to the same thing. Go back again to Revelation 12, 16. According to the text, what did the earth do to the woman or the church. Helped. The earth helped the church. Why? Well, according to the text, we know because apparently, dragon is spewing all this flood. Now listen to the previous text, verse 15. It says, so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman... Why? That he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. What was the dragon trying to do to the church? Destroy. Trying to destroy the church. Satan was trying to kill the woman by flood. So the dragon is spewing this flood towards the church. And then the earth came. And what did he do to the flood? He swallowed all of that flood. And thus, the earth saved the church. It became an escape, a safe haven for the woman. Are we following so far? We're still on track? Let's do a quick recap. Revelation 12, 16. We're going to do it slowly. But the earth, who are we talking about here? unpopulated area help the woman, and the woman is, is a symbol of what? Church. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, meaning that the earth provided a safe haven, which the dragon, or who? Satan, had spewed out of his mouth. Now, Look closely at this text. We know that it is talking about how God's people found a safe haven in an unpopulated area because Satan was going after them. Are we on the same page? So let's match this with history. There is only one era that fits this narrative of Revelation 12. And by the way, this is where the United States come into the picture. Let me show you. It was during the Dark Ages, or also called the Middle Ages, that God's people was being heavily persecuted in Europe. One historical account actually said this. The persecutions visited for many centuries upon this God-fearing people were endured by them, notwithstanding the crusades against them and the human butchery to which they were subjected. They continued to send out their missionaries to scatter the precious truth. They were hunted to what? To death. 
the enemies were coming at God's people like a flood. Now, particularly in England, King James mandated everyone to attend the Church of England. Otherwise, severe punishment will follow. Take a look at this description. It says, they were hunted and persecuted on every side until their former affliction were but as flea bitings in comparison. Some were clapped into prison. Others had their houses watched night and day and escaped with difficulty. Most were obliged to fly and leave their homes and means of livelihood. And by the way, if you are a student of history, you know that this part of history is no secret. There are several books written about this time period. So now we see that the church at this point is looking for a solution. They looked everywhere for a safe place. Here's the question. Where did the church end up going? They didn't go to Africa. They didn't go to Asia. For some time, they actually stayed in the Netherlands. But finally, they came to what they called the New World. Now, what are we talking about? This land. They came to this land. Now, notice, I just quoted this from a man named William Bradford. Some of you might be familiar with the name. He's an Englishman who escaped the persecution and came to Plymouth on the Mayflower. William Bradford. You see, this history fits the prophecy like a glove. And we know at that point, the land in America was wild. It was unsettled. It was uncleared and uncivilized. So right here on this land, the church or the woman found a safe haven to worship the true God and persecution stopped. Here's what I want you to notice. That earth in Bible prophecy particularly represents the land of America. This is the unpopulated place where persecution ended. This is the place where God's church finally found freedom. You see, Bible prophecy is trustworthy. I mean, look at what we just studied. It was fulfilled to the detail. Now, the pilgrims could have chosen China or even Guyana. And I read that's even true. They considered Guyana, but somehow, somehow, they came to this country. They came to America fulfilling the words of this prophecy. Friends, we must trust the word of God. Yes, political leaders and influential government entities can make their own plans, but ultimately, God's word will be fulfilled. We often take it for granted, but frankly, the words of these books has dedicated and will dictate the course of human history. Let's go to the Bible again. We just covered the first prophecy about the USA and how this country started and how it became a safe place for Christians who fled Europe. Go to the next chapter, Revelation 13, starting in verse 11. Here we find the next prophecy. Revelation 13, starting in verse 11. The Bible says, Then I saw... Another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Stop. Let's do a recap. What does the earth represent? Unpopulated area, 
this lamb. But notice, this time, something is coming out of this land. What does the text say? Who came, who came out from this land? A beast. Now, what does a beast represent in Bible prophecy? Daniel 7, 23 says, A beast, the fourth beast, shall be a fourth kingdom. In other words, in Bible prophecy, a beast represents a kingdom or a nation. I want you to notice that the Bible actually prophesied how USA became a nation. When the pilgrims came for the first time, they didn't establish a government right away. Mayflower arrived in 1620. And we know that USA didn't have its independence until 1776. It took 156 years for them to finally establish a nation. And this is what this verse is talking about. A nation emerged from this land. What kind of nation did they establish? Read again Revelation 13, verse 11. What does the beast have? Two horns, like what? Like a lamb. Now, I know many of you already have an answer to this. What does a lamb represent in the Bible? Jesus. In fact, the book of Revelation alone mentioned the lamb 29 times, and all of them is referring to Jesus. So look, in the beginning, the United States of America was set up as a Christ-like nation. Not necessarily a Christian nation, but as a Christ-like nation, there's a difference. Now, what do I mean? A Christian nation implies that there is a particular religion that is adopted by the country. In this case, Christianity. Well, the truth is, that's not quite what the pilgrims desired. Because after all, they came to this country seeking religious liberty because they knew how terrible it is when a nation has its own religion. They were just being persecuted by England. Because England says, we're going to make Church of England the official religion of our country. So the founding fathers of our country envisioned religious liberty. Look, if you are inclined to worship the Bible God, go ahead. But if you are inclined to worship Buddha, you are free to do so. They made it clear that they don't want any religion to be the government's religion. Everyone has freedom of choice. And that, my friends, is a principle from Jesus. Just look at his life. He never forces anyone. He upholds the right for any of his created being to choose whether they want to obey him or not. This is why I believe USA was a Christ-like nation, not Christian nation. Because we uphold the freedom for everyone to choose for themselves. Listen to the foundation of our government. This is quoted from the First Amendment. It says, Congress shall make how many law? No law respecting an establishment of what? Religion. Does that include Christianity? Yes. It's written in our amendments that even Christianity, as true as it is, should not have any law made by the United States to make its citizens be Christians. 
Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people of peaceably to assemble and to petition government for a redress of grievances. That's from First Amendment. This is the foundation of our country. So, now, at this point, USA is established as a lamb-like nation, meaning that USA upholds the core principle of Jesus, freedom to choose. Now, up until today, we have been enjoying this freedom for almost 248 years. The freedom and principles that we have in this country has become an example to so many other nations. But here's the question. How long will this freedom last? Will there be an end to it? Where is this country headed? Go back to Revelation chapter 13, and we're going to finish the verse. Revelation 13, verse 11, the Bible says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, that's talking about the United States, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like who? Like a dragon. I want you to notice, we're still talking about the United States, but according to Bible prophecy, a drastic change will take place in this country. I am like Christ-like nation that upholds freedom will start speaking like a dragon. Now, what does that mean? Listen to the principle of Jesus. Matthew 12, 34, Jesus says, how can you, being evil, speak what? Good things. Here's the principle. For out of the abundance of what? Of the heart, the mouth speaks. So Jesus says, any of us actually speak what is abundance in our heart. So if USA will start speaking like a dragon, well, we can conclude that its heart is no longer lamb-like but dragon-like too. Now, what does it mean to be like a dragon? Before finishing this prophecy, I want to show you three characteristics of Satan. First, Satan wants to be worshipped. You remember the story when Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He gave him three temptations. And on the third one, Satan said to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you fall down. And what's the next word? Worship me. Satan came to Jesus and challenged him to worship him. And of course, Jesus didn't do it. But it shows what Satan really desires. He wants to be worshipped. Now, second characteristic of Satan. Satan uses force instead of upholding freedom of choice. We just saw that in the Dark Ages, in the Middle Ages. When Satan does not make you do what he wants you to do, he's going to threaten and kill you. Here's another text. Revelation 2 verse 10 says, Indeed, the devil is about to do what? To throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. Satan always resorts to force by persecuting you, by throwing you into prison, by threatening you. Here's the third characteristic. Satan is a liar. According to John 8.44, for he's talking about Satan, is a liar and what? And the father of it. Satan has always used this method since the beginning of his fall. He deceives and he lies. Now I'm sharing these characteristics to show you that unfortunately our country will follow suit. I know it's not easy to even think that USA 
as a country, will be on the side of Satan. But just look at the rest of this prophecy and you will find the same traits that I just mentioned. First, worship. Look at Revelation 13, verse 12. The Bible says, And he, still talking about USA, And he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to do what? To worship. Worship who? The first beast. Is that God? It can be God. You see, USA in the last days will try to make people worship, and according to this text, is to worship the first beast. Now, please stay with me. We're not going to go into all the details, but who is the first beast? Who is behind the first beast? Revelation 13, 4, so they worship who? The dragon who gave authority to the first beast, and they worship the beast. Now, I want you to notice that when people say that they worship the beast, essentially they're worshiping the person behind the beast. And who is behind the beast? Satan. Unfortunately, according to Bible prophecy, USA will strongly encourage false worship. It will make people worship the first beast, and ultimately, those that worship the first beast worship Satan. Second, the use of force. Now, 10 years ago, it's crazy to think that the USA will force its people to do anything. But now, after the pandemic, etc., we have seen how some government branches use force and threats to make us do something. And that is also prophesied in this chapter. Let's look at verse 12 again. This is what the Bible says. And he, still talking about USA, exercises what? All authority of the first beast in his presence. And what's the next word? Causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. We've read this text just now, but I'm emphasizing the word Causes. Now, how is our country is going to cause the people to false worship? If you keep reading, you'll see the method that our country will use. Verse 15. He, still talking about USA, was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be what? To be killed. This is the method that the USLA will use to encourage false worship by threatening to kill them. Unfortunately, this is where we're headed. The Bible clearly says that USA will enforce false worship and those who wouldn't worship will be killed. Slowly but surely, the freedom we once cherished will be gone and there will be no more religious liberty. Either you have to worship in a way that is approved by the government or you'll be killed. The third, the use of lies. USA will make people worship the first beast by means of deception as well. Look at verse 13. And he, still talking about USA, performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. Man, for what purpose? Verse 14, and he deceives. Those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Unfortunately, deception and lies will also be used 
to make people worship the devil. Look, I know that this is not how our country started. But these similarities cannot be denied. The Bible points out that USA will experience a change of heart contrary even to its own constitution. What do you think? Look around. Are we slowly losing the freedom that we once had? I believe it's happening. It's been happening. This transformation from a lamb-like to dragon-like nation will be more and more prominent. And according to Bible prophecy, USA will play a prominent role in the last days. Freedom will be taken away. I mean, just look. Based on what we have studied, no matter who's leading this country, the words of this prophecy will come true. Now, what are we supposed to do? What we are feeling is probably similar to what Elijah did. If you want, you can turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah found himself in a very similar situation with us. He looked at Israel as a nation and he realized that the nation was in apostasy. God has chosen Israel to be the light of the world. It was supposed to be a nation where God's name will be honored. But they had a corrupt king named Ahab who ruled with his wicked wife, Jezebel. As a result, false worship became prominent. Altars of Baal were found everywhere. Israel had a change of heart and not for the better. They were far from what God has called them to do. And then there was Elijah. He was a prophet of God. He was faithful. He did all he could to call the people to worship the true God. But the result, not too successful. If anything, Elijah's effort to reform the nation caused Jezebel to go after his life. So he ran away. And he shut himself from anyone. Pick up in verse 9. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Now he ran away because he felt hopeless. He felt like he's at the end of his journey. He's done all his, he, could, he could, but there's no result. So the Lord asked, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, look, Lord, I have been very jealous for you. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Elijah was a champion for truth. He did the best he could, but all he received was death threats. So he felt helpless in trying to reform the nation. Probably some of us feel or will feel the same way as Elijah. We might get discouraged after realizing where our nation is headed. We're trying to do the best in, in, for our parts. We're trying to do the right thing. But we are small in numbers and we're threatened to be killed. But notice what God replied. Verse 18, God says, Elijah, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. 
What is God saying? Unknown to Elijah that he had saved a group of faithful people to himself. God had preserved a remnant who hasn't bowed their knees to Baal. And you know, this story gives me hope. According to Revelation, our country is headed in the wrong direction. And it's true. And it will happen. But Revelation also tells me that God will have a remnant in this country. That God will have a faithful people to himself. Read again the text that we just studied. Revelation 12, 16. It says, but the earth Help the woman, that's USA, helping the church. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. We read this before. This is when the pilgrims came to this land. And then notice the next text. Verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest. Or if you have King James, it says remnant of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right here, in this country, after the church moved into this land, the Bible says that Satan is still angry. But notice that he's, he's still angry, not with the church at large anymore, but in particular, he's angry with a remnant who still keep the commandments of God. He's still angry with a faithful minority. And friends, this is our hope. That even though the entire nation might change from being a lamb-like to dragon-like, God still has his faithful people. Even though the majority will be against us, God has reserved his loyal people on his side. We have to realize that we cannot stop what has been prophesied. But we can choose to be part of the faithful few. The faithful who will stand up for the truth. The faithful who will call sin by its right name. The faithful who will refuse to be bought or sold. The faithful who will remain faithful until death. Friends, when all of these prophecies come to its head, where will you find yourself? Which side are you on? And I pray and hope that we all will be on the Lord's side with the rest of his faithful people. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for opening to us the words of your prophecy. It, make us, it makes us feel helpless sometimes, realizing that we can't do much. And this country might be headed in the direction that we don't prefer to go. But you said it, and you declared the end from the beginning. So Lord, we want to trust you. And we thank you for warning us ahead of time of what is coming. So while we're still given the opportunity today, we want to come back to you. If there's anything that we have held back from you, we ask that you may please help us to remove that. It might be late to join the faithful later. But Lord, while you still give us the opportunity today, we want to decide to be on your side. We want to recommit our lives to you. 
And thank you for being faithful to your people. We thank you and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.